Gary Peterson here. Today we're going to talk about your movement. And I've got a, a motion where if my opponent is back here playing a shot, I like to be at 45 degrees. So I like to stand at 45 degrees here. It doesn't have to be 45, it might be slightly less or somewhere there. And what that does, it allows me to move really quickly this way and really quickly that way. They're the two areas that I'm going to have the most trouble with. Um, so that one there is going to be the most common one where I'll have to go back there. And yes, I can go forward from there. And the boast is really well covered, which is the one that can knock you around really big time. But people often say, if you're standing at 45, how can you possibly get that shot back here? So what happens is from here, if I just peel, so all I have to do is peel across. If I peel across, that goes straight that way. So the motion is not bad. It's not like I'm doing this to fall away. As long as I lean back, if I lean back and peel, that happens really quick. So that motion there, the cross court is covered really, really quickly, like really quickly. So there, 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 the, the volley from here, it just, you just reposition this foot. So the volley there, there happens really fast. So it's of no concern whatsoever. So I'll often do a ghosting move. Let's say I've got three points, one there, one there, and one there. So I'll go, I'm gonna look back there as though the ball's back there every single time. And I'm gonna play a cross court every shot over there. So I'll go there, I'll go cross court here, and I'll come back there. And then I'll go back here, and I'll cross court there. And then I'll come back here. Then I'll go all the way back here, and I'll cross court here. Then I'll go all the way back here, and cross court. And back here, and cross court. And all the way back here, and cross court. All right, so it works really, really well. This side is no different. And this is actually easier in some ways. I've got this explosive back foot on this side from my arm on this side. So I can cover the cross court really well. So from here, 45 degrees, because my opponent is back here. So I'll go from here and I'll watch here. I'll go there straight across is really powerful because that motion there, even though I'm 45 here, the first move is that. There, 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 there. This one here, mid court there, back here, it's back foot again. There, so it's back foot, there, and back. And then I'm 45 again. And off I'll go, right in the back, there, cross, there. Back again, back, there. Back, and again, okay? So it works really well. The other thing I'll say is you don't generally hang around at the tee. They talk about the tee. They talk about getting to the tee, but you don't generally hang around about the tee. You hang around about back here. So it's about, this is where all the wear is on the court generally. Some courts that aren't as well maintained as this one. You can generally see a fair bit of wear right around about here. So it's about here that I need to come back to. So there you go, that's how to explosively cover that one. That goes across when you talk about a 45 degree stance. And that all happens because you need to go back there a lot, and that's how it all works. So I hope that clarifies things for you a little bit here and there. People say 45, no good, we need to do this. I don't watch the ball very well, so I find I need to be here so I can watch my opponent because I need to be comfortable when I'm actually watching my opponent so I can show a bit more attention to it. So it's just how it works. There you go, I hope you found that interesting. 45 degrees, and here are the movements, and I'll go through these in a little bit more detail. Okay, we've got a situation where we're coming back towards the tee here and we're looking over to where the ball is and we're going to go with a 45 degree stance and we're going to cover off each one of these three shots so it's one two and three so in this situation right now what's happening is we're coming back to the tee from the back corner and watching 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 we're going to go with a 45 degree stance roughly and that's the 45 degree stance there i'm doing it off a split so you see when i talk about a 45 degree stance although my feet are not 45 degrees my hips are 45 degrees so my hip line through here will be 45 degrees that's this line through here which is roughly where we're talking okay so your feet may lag or catch up or whatever you like to call it so that'll all be part of it all but we'll just go through it all and just watch a little bit in slow motion. So we'll go from here, we split and straight off 
into either a front foot or a back foot. In this case, it's going to be a back foot. If I had to go further, I'd take the extra foot across if it was over near the sidewall, but on a volley there, that's basically the move that you would do. You come back to the T, now I'll cross court it. So what happens is I'm gonna watch now and go a 45 degree stance. So we get our feet there and watching at 45, hips are 45. Even further at this stage right now, I'm really pushing them right across. That's probably a little bit too far, but um, just take it all um, with just a little bit of, um, let's say common sense if you like, that you don't go probably as far as I've pushed across there. I'm really trying to emphasize it so I show that this is how it all works. Now your back foot will peel across, that back foot peel across. It, and the biggest part to remember is to lean. So you've got to lean back this way. If you lean back this way, what happens then is you just naturally will move that way. It'll just happen that way. So as long as you're leaning back, when you actually um, move that foot, that back foot back, so it's because all, the, all your weight is going off this leg here, and so your angle is back that way. So it's this leg that's got that angle about it, not um, over this way. If it was over this way, then all your weight would be in the middle. So that's just how that one works. Okay, we'll continue it on. We'll come back across, shuffle, step level with the ball, and you may have to step back a little bit, which is fine, to get behind the ball. So I've got my shoulders and hips behind the ball, and then I'll drive down the wall. Cross court hit, so we can watch in the back corner because we're watching the ball. We're gonna go 45 degrees. And generally, as I said, I don't go back to the tee. I'll be back in that um, purple area in the middle. Okay, there's your split at 45. So now I know where the ball's going. And the back foot will go back across. You watch the ball go across. Court, push off the outside foot once again, leaning back. Float through the air a little bit. Big step here, reach. And this is the extra hop, um, which is a resettling of feet, which gives you a chance to actually get this one. You can go with a bigger step and reach off that front foot. So I could pull the, a shot off this front foot, or I can put this extra jump in here and power drive. If you have the time, you power drive. You'll always go two feet if you have time because two feet are more powerful than a single foot. And then we'll come out of it. So that's pretty cool. Let's have a look at the other side. Okay, so we've got the other side. We're going to watch our right foot go straight across. So that open move there, and it's quite a reasonable lot size step to actually get drive and pushed back to that side. So what we when we normally start, we normally start over this side so this side of the tee when we start so two feet one foot will be there the other foot will be here so i'll be in this side of the box if the ball's over there and that's why i'm so far across from here but um, we'll continue on and that motion there this shuffle in the air see the float in the air which is that float there and the changing of feet it allows this large step final to the ball large final step to the ball which you can get some real power on that's a power position to strike from because your back foot and you've got full arm reach because your arms on the right side of your body so back foot is sensational from there it's just really really good then you cut back to the T and then once again we're talking um, going over into that box so over into the backhand side I'm virtually in the middle there but never mind and it's 45 degrees you don't have to be 45 you could be 25 you could be 30 it's whatever's comfortable for you but as long as you can see and then you'll turn so you turn your body and you'll peel back so once again it's about balance and weight distribution so you've got to have your weight back behind your legs so from here i drop my body and push off that left leg and it'll go across and that spin in the air, this is where it's really important because I'm basically facing the front wall right now. But you'll notice that my left foot, it will turn in midair. So I'll come around here. See it turns back. And now it's turned around 90 degrees almost. And what that's done is now opened up my hips as I've turned through midair. So what that also does is it takes all the stress off your body in midair so there's no real stress on your knees and on your on your ankles and so it's very very body friendly and it really helps you big time so then that big step once again comes in and that's a power position to hit off um, i didn't swing because i'm showing the movement but um, that's how that one works and it's pretty simple if we have a look at the third one and 
and go from here so we're 45 degrees once again so i can easily see see my my head is really really quite turned even though i'm at 45 degrees so imagine how far your head has to turn if you actually face the front wall you've really got to turn your upper body and turn your, your head back to be able to see the ball and um so i'm in a quite a relaxed position here because of my feet position versus a wound up position so there's the shuffle so i've gone with the shuffle once i've worked out um, to land at open 45 and now my foot hasn't landed because I know that it's going cross court so what happens I've landed on my left foot but not on my right and my right foot continues to move so I'll just go back again I'll just go clicks so watch the, the shuffle start there there's a the shuffle start and watch where my, where my right foot lands so I've gone in the air I don't know where the ball is going to go now I've just about worked it out and my right foot's going to cut across and it cuts open by the time it's even landed. So from there, now I'll shuffle back and float in midair. So that float in midair, once again, my left foot is turning. So it's turning, 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 and land. And then you can take either two steps and jump, or you can take the big lunge. So this is the one when the ball's deep and you've got a bit of time. You'll go two feet. I'll show you the next one as well. You'll swing cross court. You'll come out, you'll watch the ball, you'll cut straight back to the deep T position, which is the purple area, and you'll face 45. So we go 45, once again we split here, and we're going to go straight off the split, and cut back to a large lunge one foot off the back foot so you've got an option if you can do it you go with that one because that takes a rising ball but if you've got time off the back wall you'll take the extra step and then you'll come through so there you go that's a little bit more detail about what we do and how we do it it's really about that turning in midair and so it keeps all the stress off your body and we get back to a 45 so that's where we land so you come in and you time your split as you land so you land on your on your um split and um, you go from there. So I've come in and I haven't got to the T and then split. I actually split as I land. So as I get into the T, I'm splitting straight away. So that you time your return back to the T so you split as you go. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. That's a quite a good way to, to um, check out just what happens with the 45 degree stance and covering the most difficult ones, which are the cross court ones. Hope you enjoyed.